All right, guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about using Ethernet on an Arduino. Now, a lot of you might already be going, oh, why would you even use a Arduino for that? There's, you know, the ESP32s and all this other stuff that already supports Ethernet. Um, but, you know, you might have a special use case like I do where you still want to stay in the Arduino suite and you do want to use Ethernet. It's really quite simple if we're just going to be slapping the shield on top of an already existing Uno. Uh, or maybe you have another project where you're going to use a module and just wire in the proper pins. Either way, uh, but for this video, I will be using this shield. I'm just using this as a stepping stone to get started. Uh, we will probably see on this channel a video where I lay out a circuit board with the... Uh, uh, I'm going to use the same uh, WizNet chip on there. Um, I don't really like this style Ethernet port where it's sunk into the board like that. Uh, it makes for more hardware considerations on the bottom, but uh, yeah, I'd probably come up with a pretty similar layout, probably copy there since it's open source for the most part, and then uh, do that for my layout. But in this video, we're just going to be putting this on top of an Uno and uh, getting a quick down and dirty look at getting started with this. So and yeah, stick along because uh, I think I'll hit on a couple of topics that I've noticed really aren't covered in other videos or well covered in them at least uh, on this subject. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at how this actually mounts on the board and how it fits and go from there. Okay, so let's jump right into the hardware. Uh, don't mind me hiding the brand name on this uh, knockoff non-genuine Arduino here. I've tried to come to an agreement with sponsorship from them in the past and we never did come to an agreement, so no free sponsorship for them. Um, but yeah, so we have a regular old Arduino Uno, and then we have this WizNet. This is the uh, 5500 model. Uh, I think in the link in the description, I'm going to put the 5100 because they don't use this uh, particular uh, Ethernet plug. This this one interfaces, and it's really close to, to uh, the USB-B port on here. Uh, which could be a problem for people if they're using a non-standard size uh, USB-B connection. It may interfere. Same with if your Ethernet has like some big rub rubberized connection underneath it, it may interface. So I'm going to link in the description the other model of this that sets it up a little bit higher. Uh, but yeah, I have the 5500 and just like the 5100, it mounts directly on here. And uh, on top of that... Uh, Arduino does sell their own version of this shield. Uh, it looks like it is a complete copy of the uh, 55 or 5100. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I, I believe WizNet is the original designer of these. So yep, it just sandwiches on top as you'd expect from a shield. But see what I mean? They're right on top of each other. So your Ethernet connection and your USB B, depending on how bulky your connector is, there they uh, they may interfere and not fit. So that's definitely the one drawback I see to this 5500. Um, you have an SD card slot on here because I guess. Their mindset is if you're going to be running some sort of web server that's actually presenting like images or anything like that, you're definitely going to need that. Uh, we're not going to be running that kind of web server on this, at least in anything that I'm working on. I'm going to be using a raw connection. You can do Telnet as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, hardware wise, this is very simple. It's just a uh, WizNet controller on here and then your standard peripherals you would need to support. Okay, so let's get started connecting to our Arduino over Ethernet. First, we're going to put some firmware on this Arduino, uh, but before we get there, let's start with what you need to even use this shield at all in Arduino. You'll notice I'm using the newest Arduino IDE, uh, which is the version 2.04. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out if you're still in the old version uh, because it has some code completion in there, makes it a little easier. So definitely, uh, I do 
recommend checking it out. It is still a nightly build, so that means there's, you know, possibilities of bugs and stuff like that. So first thing you'll notice is there's a little bit different look and feel to it. So you have your line count and all that, but uh, also over here, your libraries, your board managers are all right there. Uh, so you're going to need the Ethernet library, which is uh, this one right here that I have installed. Uh, and so you just, you know, search in the library manager for it and then just click install. So all you have to do to get it set up. Uh, you'll notice once you have it set up, you'll have a new example section down here with Ethernet, which has a bunch of uh, different examples you can try out. Okay, with so it. now let's look at my example really using uh, this Ethernet. What we're going to be making is a raw connection, which you'll kind of see already opened up over here in Putty. I just haven't started the connection yet. Uh, but yeah, I'm using a raw connection. You could also set it to the right port and do a Telnet connection. Uh, but I'm doing, I'm working on something that's more of like a piece of test equipment. Uh, it's going to be a Ethernet relay controller, as you can kind of see right there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what my project is. And I wanted to do this video before I got really far into the project where then the code becomes complicated. I wanted to show how simple it really is to get started with Ethernet on Arduino when you're using the library and you don't have to, you know, initialize everything yourself. Uh, so if you're using one of these common uh, Ethernet controllers here, uh, you, you can get started pretty quickly on this. So let's actually take a look at the code now and see what all you need to make your connection. Uh, you're going to have to assign a MAC address. So uh, I just chose a, a random one because I am on a local network here. So I just made something I knew nothing else would be on the network. Uh, you'll see a lot of example codes out there use the dead beef feed, which has a really interesting history on dead beef. Um, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but uh, kind of explain where that comes from for anybody that's also kind of thrown off. Why would it say dead beef? Um, is that you, it goes all the way back to like the 70s with IBM. They would use it to fill unused space. So that way you knew if you hit dead beef or anything like that, you knew you were in like the wrong area memory address or something. So kind of interesting backstory to that. Um, but yeah, let's stay on topic here. Uh, if you're using a static IP address, you uh, you just put what your static IP address would be. Uh, if you do that, you also need to put a comma here and IP, so that way it'll or IP address, and so that way it will uh, call to that IP address for it. Uh, you need to set your socket that's going to be open. Um, like normally, like if you're doing a web server, it'd be 80. If it was Telnet, it'd be 23. Um, test equipment can be the, these really far down ones. Um, Keysight generally uses 24, or, sorry, 5024 or 5025. Uh, so I just kind of went with 5024 because it's a, a familiar number that I would probably not forget when I'm working on these because you just see that on a lot of Keysight stuff. Um, and then this one here is actually a reset function uh, that will reset the uh, Arduino. So um, that. So that's that. And oh, if you haven't noticed, you um, you get these kind of explanations here in the new version of Arduino. When you hold your mouse over stuff, it's kind of like, oh, okay, what is it? And so it'll tell me like what the value is of that variable uh, if I hover over the variable. So really useful changes made to Arduino. Like these are like finally bringing the Arduino IDE into like somewhat 21st century kind of IDEs. This was this used to be like using a text editor that just highlighted stuff. So it's so much better now with the, with this update. I, I really do recommend uh, trying out 2.0.4 uh, or whatever's the latest and greatest uh, when you uh, <laughs> when, when you see this video. So if it's changed, but yeah, so this one just pulls this function, which should reset the Arduino. I actually haven't tested it yet, so uh, we, we will test this uh, in the uh, uh, video. Let's uh, add another line here uh, that will let us know if it actually failed. So, uh, so reboot failed. There we go. If it makes it to there, we know it didn't actually uh, reboot. Oh, we need to move the client stop in that case. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll just control. We'll move the client stop. Uh, it, you really should do the client stop before it resets, but uh, we do want to actually be able to see that print if uh, if it uh, doesn't print. Won't make a big deal. But yeah, that's kind of 
what we have going on here for the code. Uh, what it's going to do here now is, um, okay, so back to where we were in there. So we have the Ethernet begin and we just uh, declare the MAC address. So that way it'll get the uh, IP address from the DHP. CP server. Uh, if we uh, put the comma and the IP address in, then it'll treat it as a static IP. And then we'll just do this server begin function. So now we come down to our main loop here. And it's basically if the client's available, this is just like doing if serial's av available, we will read the string. So the command equals read string until, and then we're going to stop on the carriage return bit. Um, cause when you hit enter on putty, it's going to send a carriage return and then a new line. Uh, so we'll just stop at the carriage return and, uh, use that for functioning. There's re I really do need to add some more parsing into there. Cause there's going to be like more to these commands than, than just this. Uh, but for right now, this gets us started and gets us moving uh, and keeps it simple. So yeah, we're just going to make a string that's uh, reading a string and then we kind of decide what our commands are based on what the string is. We could do like a default, like a case switch where it would uh, then just kind of reply like invalid command or something. But let's just keep it simple for this video. So let's uh, actually upload our code. So we got our uh, USB plugged in and we got our ethernet connected up top. Uh, we are actually uploading it over USB for this. So we got the right COM port set. We got the Arduino Uno selected. So let's go ahead and upload to the Uno. Okay, we are uploading it now and it's done. So let's open our connection. We have a open connection here. So let's type in our command that we know it will respond to, which is the ID in command, which is the uh, identifier command for Skippy. Uh, yeah, if you haven't noticed right now, I'm working in kind of like a Skippy style thing. I'm not going to follow all the rules to Skippy and make it like this I, uh, IEEE compliant Skippy thing, but uh, I'm get going to make it where it works good enough that uh, anybody that's used to Skippy should be able to use it. So there we go. And it doesn't work if you mistype the command. So uh, I mistyped the command there. So let's go ahead and type it in correctly this time. I D N, which is why it might be useful to have that uh, invalid command thing there. So there we go. We got our ether relay version 0 0.1, which is what I'm going to Kind of call this thing when it's done. I mean, I may change the name, but for now it's Ether Relay. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if the reset function works. I haven't tested this out yet. Um, so RST, enter, rebooting. We never did get to the reboot failed, so it does uh, in fact reset it. So we actually should get an error if we try to uh, connect a, again, I believe, because we aren't. Yeah, so now we have a uh, uh, network error because we didn't reinitialize that connection to it. So uh, yeah, it just, it's like software caused a connection issue, abort. So yep, that uh, that is what happens if you reboot the uh, thing in the middle of it. If you, if you were to like upload and then, so you have to restart your PuTTY connection to it. I guess I should mention right here what PuTTY is for uh, anybody that hasn't ever used it before. It is a, uh, terminal client for doing these kinds of things for, you can do uh, serial connections, uh, which you can do, you just define your, your port and your baud rate. Uh, you can do S SSH, RLog and Telnet, and these other ones. You can also use Kitty, which has some other functions to it too. It's very similar to PuTTY. It's like a port of PuTTY that has some more functions to it. One of the nice things about uh, Kitty is you can do scripts with it. But uh, yeah, either one will work for, for doing what we're doing here. Uh, but yeah, putty, and you just put in your IP address. If you don't, if you use a dynamic IP address, you're gonna have to go into your router and look and find it. Um, so you just open up your router setting. It's gonna vary for whatever your router is and see. So you might wanna use a static IP address if your router will support that, um, just to make it easier on yourself. I, I specifically want this thing to be dynamic. Um, going back to these MAC addresses right here. So when it's a hobby use kind of thing, you can really use whatever MAC address you want as long as it's not repeating one that's already on your network, as long as you're staying on your private network with it, um, you're really fine with doing whatever you want 
a lot of the high-end or more expensive modules are actually going to come with an assigned MAC address so that it'll be on a piece of paper in the box or something like this. Uh, but some of these cheaper or lower-end ones, uh, which the WizNet, this is a genuine WizNet one, is actually a pretty nice one. Most people go for the clones, uh, but WizNet, even with their genuine ones, they don't give out a, uh, a MAC address to save money. You have to buy these blocks of MAC addresses from uh, IEEE to, to get one that's like assigned that no one else is using. Um, so, you know, if you're going to sell a product, you really do need to buy a block of IP uh, of the MAC addresses or it, buy chips that come with them because some chipsets will actually come with a mac address on there so uh, just kind of keep that in mind when it comes to product design you're either gonna have to buy a block which for four thousand mac addresses it's five hundred dollars um so just kind of give you an idea of there uh if you buy a million it's it's like a couple thousand or uh, yeah i think it was like fifteen hundred dollars to to buy a million mac addresses so Definitely something to be aware of if you're making a product um, on numbering your MAC addresses and stuff, and then just you know you just go sequentially through the number that you purchased until you run out. Um, but uh, if you're doing hobby stuff, you know you can get away with a dead beef or you know this what you know whatever you want. Uh, you could even go with MAC addresses of things you knew you threw in the trash uh, that you know that MAC address will never be used again. But yeah, you definitely want to use like a properly assigned MAC address if you're going to sell a product. Uh, sometimes you can even buy EEPROMs that come with an assigned MAC address on there. I don't know if those EEPROMs have those assigned MAC addresses purchased from IEEE, if they're actually coming from the pool or not, but you can buy um, EEPROMs that come with a MAC address and you can just call that MAC address off that EEPROM. Uh, Cause like, if you're gonna do something like this, you're gonna store settings, which I am gonna have a EEPROM uh, ultimately on this device to keep track of how many times the relays have been clicked. So that way, you know, like preventative maintenance things there. All right, well, obviously there's a whole lot more that goes into uh, doing these kind of connections. If you're gonna run like a web server and things like that, but for doing a simple, like I wanna to communicate to an Arduino over the network, this will really gets you started here with this video. One of the things to keep in mind when you think about Arduinos and if you should do ethernet on it is, is keep what your goal is realistic with it. So if you're trying to run like a MySQL database and stuff like that, you're not gonna be able to do that. You, you need a um, you need something like a system on chip, like a Raspberry Pi or something like that to do that kind of product. But if you're trying to do something that, you know, turns on and off a light or, you know, any of those IoT kind of simple things, read some sensor data and send it back, that's something that, you know, an Arduino or an STM32 or something of that nature would really, you know, kind of shine. Uh, but yeah, you know, keep your expectations realistic with making an ethernet or Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I, I was not interested in doing Wi-Fi on here. I just wanted to keep it as strictly hardline ethernet. So I hope I was able to help you get started with your Arduino project on ethernet. Uh, it's not something outside of the realm of possible. I know a lot of times if you ask, hey, can I do, you know, IoT things with an Arduino, people look at you like, why would you do that? You know, that's that's just not what they're for. And but they, they really can do it. They're they're plenty powerful enough to do this kind of thing. So definitely uh, keep your mind open when it comes to this. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. I'll see you in the next one.